Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here, and today with some more properties of the convolution. In the previous video, we discussed the properties that were written in the book. Today, we have some other properties. So the first is, let's say, uh, or here today that we discuss is the property of delta function, the property of impulse, and that is, you know, very well. That is the sampling property, of course, and based on that, uh, we have this property, which means that if you have a signal x of t and that is convolved with the impulse signal delta located at t minus t one, this would give you x of t minus t one. This is as simple as it is. Now, if uh, you take the t1 to be 0, if your t1 is equal to 0, so this implies again what? x of t, if convolved with a delta of t, this gives you x of t. Now, this is an unweighted impulse that I write, that I wrote. So, if you have a weighted impulse, x of t is if convolved, with an a times delta of t minus t1, you would have an a times x of t minus t1. And the proof of this, you would know it better than me. Again, if t1 is equal to 0, so this would imply that x of t is convolved with a times delta of t. And this would give you an a times x of t. This is the first property of the day. If you have an example, let's say my x of t is r of t. If you have r of t, the ramp function is, uh, you know, convolved with an impulse which is located at t minus 2. So this would give you, have a look, a, an x of t minus 2, which means an r of t minus 2. And this you can do it by the conventional method. The answer would be the same. If you have your input to be u of t plus 3 and this is convolved with a delta of t plus 2, so this means what? Now have a look, plus 3 plus 2, this is your x of t, this is your delta of t plus 2, what would you have? This is the case. So you would have an x of t minus t1 and you also have this thing. So you would have a u of t plus 3 is over here and you have a plus 2, so you have a t plus 5 and you can obviously confirm it by the conventional method so this is the first property the second is the property of derivative the second is derivative so you know that uh, y of t is given as what it's x of t convolved with the impulse response h of t right so now if you are interested in the derivative of y of t, so the derivative of y of t, so you take the derivative of both sides, so you have x of t convolved with h of t, right? But now have a look, you, you could have a confusion in this point. The derivative would be equal to, so have a look, you would be seeking to apply the product rule which means the first derivative of second, the second derivative of first, that is not the case because this is not a product. This is the convolution. So in convolution, we have a separate property. You can also do it this way. You have another property. You take the x of t first and you convolve it with the derivative of h of t. And this would still be equal if you take the derivative of your x of t and you convolve it with your h of t. So these are the two cases and I would do them one by one. Let's say my equation is given by y of t is the ram signal is convolved with a step signal. And I need to find the derivative of y of t. So what do you have? Let's say I take R of T as my X of T and U of T as my H of T. So let's say the first. So R of T would be convolved with the derivative of U of T. 
which means that r of t would be convolved with the derivative of u of t is what? We know it's an impulse signal, right? And we know again r of t convolved with an impulse signal would give us r of t back. So this is for the first case. Now if you have from the second case, let's say I name this as a and this as b. So again the derivative of y of t, in that case what do you do? You take the derivative of your x of t. So which means I take the derivative of my, my r of t and now this is convolved with, with, with the signal u of t. So the derivative of r of t is again u of t, right? The derivative of r of t is u of t, yes. So which means that you have u of t convolved with u of t and this would give you again an r of t. Now if you don't know this, so this is coming. This maybe you understand it in the next property very well. For now, this is for the second property, the derivative. The next would be the property of integration. So if I name it number three, this would be integration and integration is a special case when it's with respect to the unit step signal. So if any general signal x of t is convolved with the unit step signal, if you have x, uh, if you have your y of t, right, which is equal to the convolution of any signal with a step signal u of t. So in that case, you would have a finite interval negative infinity to t x of tau d tau. This is the property of integration, right? So now, now we, we come to it. How is it again? So if you have, uh, let's say the signal is that you have x of t convert with u of t, right? If you have a uh, y of t, this is x of t convert with u of t, this we know. Now if we take the derivative of it, so if we have the derivative of y of t and let's say I'm taking the derivative of u of t, right? Yes, which is this case. The next, that I'm taking x of t as it is, x of t as it is, and I'm convolving it with the derivative of u of t. So now what would happen? x of t would be convolved with what? The derivative of u of t is a ram signal. The derivative of u of t is an impulse signal. So this is an impulse signal. So which means that the derivative has given you this sort of a signal. Fine. Now what do you do? Now I integrate it. So you know that the integration of the derivative will give you the function as it is. What am I saying is that if you have the derivative of y of t, right? And now if you take the integration of this thing, whole thing, this would give you back y of t. So if I integrate these two, I'm talking about this thing. And if I integrate this on the both side, that is from negative infinity to t, what would I have? I would have this back as y of t. So I would have this back as y of t. And that integration from negative infinity to t would be what? x of t when convolved with an impulse signal would give me back x of t. So for the ease, for the sake of uh, easiness, I would take uh, this uh, limit for to be t and x of t I would represent it as an x of tau and this is the tau and this is the case. Fine. And now if we talk about an example in this case, so let's say my x of t is a ramp signal. So if, if this ramp signal is convolved with u of t, so what do I get in this case? So in this case my output y of t this would simply be equal to the integration from negative infinity to t, ramp of t convolved. So it would be x of tau d tau, which means the integration of r of tau d tau. And the integration of r of tau is what? It would be a parabolic signal, right? Because it's, it's t, right? So if this is t, so which means that the answer would be your parabolic signal, which is equal to t squared upon 2. For this case yes yes the next is if you have again uh, so that I took this is let's say one the second that I talked about in the previous case if u of t is convolved 
with u of t. So the output for this particular case would be what? You have to integrate your u of t. u of tau in this case. So again, u of tau is f integrated. So what, what it will give you? It will give you a ram signal, which is r of t in this you know very well. So this is the proof over here. This is the third property, that is the property of integration. Fourth is, let's say, time delay. The fourth property is the property of time delay. Or I can say a time shift, you know. Yes, time shift, not a time delay. If this is a time shift. Now, uh, let's say I have two signals, uh, which are, let's say, x1 of t, and this is convolved with x2 of t and this gives me a y of t. Now what if I shift the signals? If I shift these two signals, so which means that I shift say x1 by and, and both by the same inverse, okay? Shift x1 and x2 by a units. By, by no sorry, not by the same inverse by t1 and t2 respectively. So what do you have is, the answer now would be what? You would have an x1, which is t minus t1, let's say, and this is convolved with an x2, which is t minus t2 now, and this would equal what? This would equal y of t minus, you would add these two, t1 plus t2. This is the property. This is the next property. You would add the delays or the advances. The shift you would add together. Right? Now, if you have uh, an example, u of t minus 1 convolved with u of t minus 2. So, for example, if you have u of t minus 1 and this is convolved with u of t minus 2, so what do you have? So, so let's say I take it first u of t, u of t is if convolved with u of t, so what do we have, negative infinity to t, u of tau, d tau, which is the ram signal, r of t, so in this case have a look, what do you have, you have a t minus 1, t1 is 1 and t2 is, uh, t2 is 2, so u of t minus 1 convolved with u of t minus 2, this would give you ram of t, 1 plus 2 is 3, you have t minus 3. This is your answer. And this is the next property, which is the property of time shift. For the next, let's say I remove the board. Okay, this is enough space, fine. Or if not, so we remove the next as well. The next property is the property of time scaling, which is property number five. Property number five is the property of time scaling. And I believe uh, that I am writing a little smaller today. So for which I'm sorry, okay? So time scaling, again, you have, uh, you know that x1 of t, it would be convolved with x2 of t, and this would give you an output y of t. So let's say I scale x1 and x2 both by a units. Scale x1 and x2 both by a units. So in that case, what would be my answer? I would have an x1 of a t plus uh, convolved with x2 of a t. This would give you 1 over the absolute of a, y of a, t. This is the next property. And remember again, you know, you would know that a cannot be equal to 0 in this particular case. So this is the property of time scaling. And if I talk about an example, so let's say I am given that t squared plus t, t squared plus t if convolved with t it gives you y of t now if the y of t is 1 over 3 times 
y of 3t what are these signals which means that my x1 and x2 in this case are unknown so what do i have have a look i can i can directly say from over here that my a is equal to 3 right so first for here t square plus 2 i would have x1 of 3t so this would equal 3t whole squared plus 3t which is equal to uh, 9t squared plus 3t and the second for x2 of 3t what would you have you would have uh, where is it this so it was simply equal to 3t right uh, yes so which means that the, the, the convolution is like this it's 9t squared plus 3t when convolved with 3t this gives you this gives you this particular thing 1 over 3 y of 3t and this is the time scaling property the next would be the area of a signal so let's say i name it as area so again if uh, if I have x1 of t convolved with x2 of t, this gives you y of t. So what would be the area? If the area of x1 is a1 and the area of x2 is a2, so the area of y is a. So this would equal to the product of these two areas. Fine. So uh, let's say, what do we do? If you have these two signals, this is your t, this is x1 of t, which exists from 0 to 1. And this is your x2 of t, which exists from 0 to 2. So you can do it by your own self. But let me tell you that in this particular case, the, the, the y of t would be like this. Where this point is 1, this point is 2, this is 3, this is 0. This would be your y of t. Fine. So now have a look. The area. So the area of this particular signal, it would be 1 multiply 1 is 1, area is 1. And over here you would have an area of 2. 2 multiply 1 is 2. So the area of the answer would be uh, these two multiplications, which is again 2. You can check. So let's say I have half of, uh, this is 1 and this is also a1, a2 times a1 again. Fine. Oh, so half of 1 into 1 plus this multiply this so 1 into 1 again and plus half of uh, this is 1 again and that is 1 again so this is half plus 1 plus half this gives you a 2 back so this is how it is fine now how did I draw this so this you know that you can take the convolution of course by the general method in the next video I'm going to show you a shortcut for this as well well to the last that is the duration or extension number seven is duration or extension Now again, if I have uh, the signal, uh, you know, x1 is convolved with x2 to give me my output y of t, right? So if my uh, x1 of t is defined in, in a range t1 to t2 and my x2 is defined in a range t3 to t4, so this means that the output y of t this would be defined for for what case the output would be defined you, you add the lower limits this is t1 plus t3 and you also add the higher limits so t2 
plus T4, and this is how. This is where your signal would be defined. You could also have an equal sign, of course. So that's all about this video, I believe. I finish this one over here. And in the next video, these are the properties of convolution. These are done. In the next video, I would I you know tell you about the shortcut method, which is based on this particular method, of course. Well, not this, but related, somewhat related to these two signals. Because that is the rectangular pulses and the duration is involved as well. So for me, that's all about this video. That's all about the properties. See you in the next lecture with whatever topic it is, you will see. So till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.